Let us open our Bibles to the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 11. Chapter 11. God willing, we will finish this chapter today and we read verse 37. Verse 37 and 38. And as he, that is Jesus, spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. So we continue with our studies on the Gospel according to Luke. We are on part 88, and the title this evening is Jesus Corrects the Double Standards of the Pharisees. Jesus Corrects the Double Standards of the Pharisees. Verse 38, And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Now, for the people of the West, it may sound strange to hear that this Pharisee marveled. He was amazed. He was surprised because Jesus did not wash his hands before dinner. We in the West use fork and spoon to eat our food. But the people in the East, almost everywhere, even today, they continue to eat with their food, uh, or rather they are, eat their food with their hands. I suppose it is the same in the parts of Africa and other places. Now, when a person invites guests to his house for dinner or lunch, it is a practice to keep a water in a vessel in front of the entrance of the house so that people can wash their hands. At times, the host will have someone standing so that he or she pours the water on the visitor's hands. And this being the custom, if you don't want to wash your hands, you will have to deliberately pass the vessel of water and the person that is standing with the vessel of water. The Pharisee that invited Jesus for dinner noticed that Jesus went into the house without washing his hands. This means Jesus deliberately bypassed the vessel with water or the person holding the vessel to pour water on the hands of the guests. And this Pharisee, we are told, marveled. He was surprised at this behavior of Jesus. Look at verse 38. He marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. What was the significance of washing the hands before eating food? Washing signified purification. According to God's laws, the priest and the Levites coming before him in the temple to offer prayer, offering, or eating the food offered in the temple, they had to wash their hands. In Exodus chapter 30, verse 7, we read that God had commanded Moses that a bronze vessel with water to be kept before the door of the temple. And the priest had to wash their hands before they began their service to the Lord. Now we will notice that although the priest and the Levites diligently carried out this ritual of cleansing, yet many of them did not refrain from committing sins. God has to destroy Jerusalem and the temple, not because they did not wash their hands and kept the rituals, but because they did not 
keep their hearts clean. They did not walk righteously. They did not love the Lord, their God, and their neighbors. They did not love the commands of the Lord and obeyed them. And they did not teach the righteous laws, but concentrated on the rituals. Such were the Pharisees. The Pharisees actually were taking the priesthood upon themselves. They actually wanted to practice in their homes what was commanded in the temple for the priest and the Levites. But the sad part was they did this to the neglect of circumcising their hearts, of keeping their hearts pure. And Jesus, by passing this washing ritual, was not breaking the command. There was no command from the Lord to wash hands before eating the food. The command was given to the priest that served the Lord in the temple. And we are told in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, I'll read for you verse 3 onward. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, eat not, holding the traditions of the elders. And many other things there be which they have received to hold, as the washing of the cups and the pots and the brazen vessels and of tables and so on. You see, this practice was introduced by men, not God. They questioned Jesus as to why his disciples don't follow these traditions. And Jesus answered, well, has Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said to them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own traditions. So this was not the commandment of God, but traditions which they had made for themselves, and they fully concentrated upon this outward rituals. So when this Pharisee marveled, was surprised, Jesus said to him in verse 39, Now, do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ravening meaning robbery, meaning you plunder other people and you practice wickedness. In other words, Jesus said to them, you are depraved. You have evil purpose and desires. So Jesus exposed their behavior and their thoughts. Outside you are like well-washed cups, but inside your heart, Jesus says, is evil, is wicked. Your very soul is corrupt. Now you will realize that this kind of belief to keep the outside clean and tidy and worship the God of clean environment has come upon us. You can have murderous thoughts in your heart, you can kill babies in the womb, you can do all kind of abominable things that arise from your heart, but you must not defile the environment. Of course, it is good to keep our environment clean and safe, Jesus says, while you keep the environment clean, more so 
Keep your heart clean, which the Lord God has given to you. The Lord Jesus Christ often received this kind of attacks from the Pharisees and from the other religious leaders and teachers of the law. When they came against Jesus, he taught them the truth as to what is most important before God, what is most acceptable by God. Verse 40, Jesus says, Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? This was a very good reminder by the Lord. You think that God has made only the outside of you? What about the inside of you? Has not the Lord also made that which is in you, your soul? You neglect to purify your souls, but all the time you want to purify the outside of you, your body, your vessels, your house, and so on. And we see this kind of cleansing that goes on in many religious traditions. They put so much effort in keeping their vessels and their house and surrounding clean, but neglect to live a holy and righteous life. They neglect to live in the fear of the Lord. They neglect to, to, to do justice. They neglect to love their neighbors and strangers. They will even kill and burn the houses of those that do not belong to their own religion. You'll remember the insight Jesus put in the minds of the people when he told them about the priest and the Levite that came after, their, after performing their service in the temple as they were going home from Jerusalem temple towards downhill. And this priest and Levite saw, saw a man wounded and almost dying, but they did not care for him. They washed their hands according to the command of the Lord, but they were not willing to keep the command which the Lord gave, saying, Thou shalt love thy God with all, their, all, all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength and will, and you should love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus gave a clean, clear example of how the priests, the Levites, they kept the law of cleansing, but they did not obey the word of God, which is to love, to love their neighbors. Verse 41, Jesus further said, but rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. Give alms of such things as you have. Well, Jesus again emphasized that you must live according to the love in the heart, mercy and compassion of the heart. He said, all things are clean to you. But this is what the Lord wants from each one of us. And then Jesus goes on to say, what a pity. Alas, this is in verse 42, but woe unto you. Alas, Pharisees, for ye tied mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass over judgment and the love of God, and these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Now you will notice that Jesus, while he exposes their evil, he also speaks of the good they do. You give tithes, he said, which is a good thing. You give tithes of the least things, even of mint, and herbs, but you pass over judgment and love of God. That is, you neglect the judgment, the commands, and the love of God. And this is what 
you must do without neglecting giving tithes. God is pleased when his people keep his commandments and love God. So you see, Jesus is constantly showing them that, look, you are only concerned about outward show, but you're not concerned about your inner spiritual life, your soul. Verse 43, Woe unto you, Pharisees! Jesus shows his grief and anguish. Woe unto you! He is grieved and says, Woe! What a grief you are! For he loved the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. There was no humility in these Pharisees. They always wanted to be first. They wanted to be honored and upheld by their society. They wanted to be first, as I said, and not last. They demanded respect and honor from people for their outward piety. And they would stand in the marketplace and pray, showing everyone that they are pious and godly. And the Lord Jesus Christ goes on to call them hypocrites. Hypocrites. Verse 44. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Ye are like graves which appear not. You know, at times, if you are in the graveyard, some graves, graves are not visible as a grave. Grass and perhaps some wild flowers have grown over it. So Jesus, Jesus, uh, says, you are like these graves that are hidden. And so men walk over them, not being aware that they are walking over a grave. Now, what's in the grave? A grave contains bones. Bones whose flesh has become corrupt and dissolved. And so also the bones, these bones, are no more good, but rotten. And Jesus calls the Pharisees hypocrite. A hypocrite is one that appears to be good, but is actually evil. And so Jesus compares the Pharisees, their hypocrisy, like the hidden graves. People associate or relate with the Pharisees as if these men are very pious, very godly. They are okay, but actually they are evil because their heart is far away from God. Like the hidden grave, they hide their true character. Verse 45, Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, Thus saying, thou reproachest us also. And he said, Jesus said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers, for ye laid men with burdens, grievous to be borne, and ye yourself touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Now, who is a lawyer? This person is one who is learned. He is an expert in the law of Moses. So he interprets the word of God to the people. So if someone is suspected of breaking a law and is brought before the elders of the village or city to be condemned, the lawyers pass the judgment according to their knowledge of the law of Moses. Now these lawyers were offended by Jesus, and they say to him, by saying these things to the Pharisees, you reproach us also. Verse 46, Jesus answering said, 
Woe unto you also, ye lawyers, for he laid men with burdens, grievous to be borne, and ye yourself touch not the burdens with one of your finger. Now, why is the Lord grieved with these lawyers? This is because these lawyers, by their interpretation of the law, actually added burdens on the people. For example, they might interpret the law of fasting, or the law of offering sacrifice, or the laws of keeping yourself pure. They would make the simple things complicated and make things difficult for people. For example, they would say how many times they have to wash their hands and in what angles they must wash their hands while or rather uh, in what angle that they must keep their hands while washing. You know, there are, you must have seen some people doing all this kind of thing while washing their hands and what they must uh, say, what prayer they must say while washing their hands and washing their pots and other items. They made the life of the people difficult, burdened. People believed them because these lawyers made them believe that they were educated and trained in this. Like we have the priest in the Orthodox or the Roman Catholic Church, or we have some pastors who claim to be apostles and prophets and healers. People believe them because of their titles and the knowledge they pretend to exhibit. Jesus says, Woe unto you, you hypocrites! You lay burdens, but you will not help to remove those burdens. Now, many times, we have heard like those who say that they, they are healers and you go to them and they pray over you, they drop you down and uh, yet you are not healed. And then they say, oh, that's because you don't have faith. You don't have faith and then it makes you even more guilty, you see. And so perhaps they will say that you have not given enough. If you give enough for the Lord, He will bring blessing upon you. So they put burdens upon the, upon the people. Some gurus, for example, will tell their devotees to shave their heads or go on to a pilgrimage to some holy place. And there they have to spend money and they have to take a leave from their work and they have to go all the way that this, this man has told them to go. Or he might say that you go to sleep on a cold floor or to offer certain type of sacrifices for their peace and for their sins or to receive what they are uh, or to receive uh, whatever they are desiring for. These are all burdens and these men lay upon that these men lay upon their devotees. Very sad very sad. Even the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church was full of such superstition, telling people you must do this and you must do that, but never to read the Word of God. And Jesus goes to say in the rest of the chapter that these are the very hypocrites that built the tombs of the prophets which their fathers killed, the prophets, to show that, look, we are doing a good deed by building them, uh, building for them in their memory tombs. And then the Lord Jesus goes to say that these lawyers have taken away the key of knowledge. Verse 52, Woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in he hindered, he hindered. How true this is. How can the teachers of the law of God or the word of God 
take away the key of knowledge? How can they take away the knowledge which God has given? This is done by distracting the minds of the people from the whole word of God to things that are mere superficial, things that cater for the body, things that are superstitious, and things that give them self-esteem, honor, and praise. For example, Priests and pastors will not encourage people to read the Bible. They will not teach them the heart of the Word of God. They will respect, they want respect and honor and even money, but they will not feed the people with the truth. For truth does not abide in them. As Jesus said, they neither themselves enter in, nor allow others to enter in, but will only cause hindrances. The Word of God is a key to life, salvation, peace, joy, righteousness, and eternal life. If the teachers of the Word of God do not themselves feed upon God's words, and experience salvation, peace, joy, righteousness, and life in the Spirit, how will they feed others? Verse 53, And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke with authority, for he was righteous and holy. And he spoke so that they might repent, that they might come to know their folly, their ignorance, that they are separated from God, that they do not have the Spirit of God. But the result of this was that the Pharisees, scribes, and lawyers, they began to try all their best to find fault with Jesus' teaching and action so that they might put him to death. They had no meekness whatsoever. And so we must be careful also in our lives that we constantly examine ourselves, that we constantly go to the Word of God. The Lord has given us His Spirit to convince us, to convict us of our sins, and that we may run this race as the Lord has asked us to run so that we get hold of Christ as Christ has got hold upon us. Let us pray. O loving Father, everything that thou hast written is for our example so that we learn we examine ourselves and we correct ourselves. That is why thy word is given for correction, for reproof, for encouragement, for edification. And we want to thank thee, dear Lord our God, because thy word is a light unto our path, a light to our life, enlightening our minds, so that, Lord, we are purified by thy word. O Lord, we thank thee for Jesus who said, My words are spirit, and they give life. And indeed, Father, we have experienced this life. Help us, O Lord, to grow in it. And now, Lord, even as we enter 
into a time of intercession and supplication. O Lord, we pray that Thou will hear our prayers, and, dear Father, that Thy kingdom may come in our lives even more urgently and fully, and that it may come into the lives of the people whom we are praying for. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.